didn't think they'd do it. Um, I can't believe they did it. And I can't believe they improved on it. So we'll talk about that and a lot more in just a minute. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt. This is Prime Analog Records. And I wanted to talk to you today about some revelations and a new pressing that I just got. Um, we get started with the business at hand. I wanted to talk about something that MGK Boston, Mike over there, was talking about since college days and all that kind of good stuff and all that kind of fun stuff. So anyway, um, what I wanted to talk about, I wanted to show you something that I found that was very unique over in, um, over in Europe years ago. I've never seen another one. Um, something about when you put something in a closet, for some reason it shrinks. I don't know if it's uh, heat or what, but uh, anyway, you don't want to put things in your closet because they'll shrink. And this thing I got back in the day, and in, in 92, I believe, it was the year. And it was really cool. I'd never seen another one like it. And it's this. This vest I got, and you see who it is, and it's a really cool vest. Check that out. And then here's the back of it. So isn't that amazing? And uh, I'll sell it to somebody if uh, they come up with the right number for it. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty, uh, so I'm pretty stuck on it, to be honest with you. But anyway, um, the business at hand. And what I was going to talk to you about is that we've been waiting for a while, um, people like me, um, who love progressive jazz, who love um, the way that progressive jazz is, um, it, there's, there's something, you know, pretty amazing about it. And it's like artists like uh, are, are, you know, I don't know how they're coming up with this mindset of who will buy these audiophile recordings and who will do this, uh, their catalogs and stuff like that, or redo them, reissue them in, a, in an amazing way, um, going back and remastering them and all this kind of stuff. But one of, one of which I know um, is, you know, there's a lot of really great artists out there like Spyro Gyro. Um, you know, you've heard me talk about Weather Report. You've heard me talk about uh, Lee Rittenauer, Dave Grusin, Bob James. Um, there's, there's a whole slew of them. Um, Caldera um, is another one that I'd love to see come out in an audiophile and just do their entire catalog. Um, there, is, there is definitely uh, you know, enough interest for it. And of course, Gino Vanelli. Uh, Gino Vanelli, I mean, people don't realize what, what a serious musician that is. And I mean, like on the Nightwalker album, that was Vinny Cayuta who was playing drums on that. And a lot of huge, huge names came out of uh, out of Gino's stuff. He's very much uh, like cutting edge, like Santana was, and a lot of people cut their teeth with with these artists. But um, you know, one of the things that I, I I know they're going by numbers, but um, I think one of the problems is, is they have trouble categorizing these these artists like Gino, like Bobby Caldwell. Um, they didn't know whether to call, you know, Bobby Caldwell R&B or, or a soul or jazz or vocals or, you know, and all these kind of things. And, and, you know, these are, these guys are so talented and they have so much to offer that when there's, when they've got, you know, they, they've got a huge following, but people don't think they do and they don't even notice, they haven't noticed and they kind of, kind of push them off to the side and kind of, you know, these, uh, you know, the main thing that everybody's always doing now is all these, uh, all like the coal trains, the Miles Davis, all this kind of stuff. And I don't know how, I don't know when and how um, all these other artists got kind of pushed off to the side and not paid attention to. It doesn't make sense to me. And, um, but finally, when I was talking about the beginning, finally, you know, Weather Report, thus the shirt, has uh, has gotten some reissue um, by an audiophile, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, presser um, or producer or co company. Um, 
you know, other than, you know, what you're talking about always is uh, mobile fidelity and UHQRs and all this kind of stuff. And I got to tell you, it's, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Bang for your buck is at, in the, the music on vinyl, MOVs. And uh, they just did, they just released the entire, the entire uh, catalog, the ones that really matter, that I think that really matter, from black market forward. Um, I think, I'm, I'm not sure which other ones they're going to release. But today we're going to talk about Black Market and we're going to talk about Heavy Weather, which they both, they, they just, they just uh, um, um, released. So um, stay tuned. start by telling you that I think much of the reason why these, um, these have most, most of those, those bands and, and groups and stuff like that that I was talking about and uh, individuals, they, they haven't been or I haven't gotten an audiophile uh, uh, pressing um, from or, or is pretty much ignored by the, the big boys is what I believe is that they've been, they were very, very well recorded in the first place. Um, many of these, uh, these artists really had, I mean, it's just like, just for instance, I mean, Gina Vanelli, uh, you know, when he first started with with uh, A&M Records, the in-house mastering uh, engineer was Bernie Grunman. He was in-house. And actually, when he left after, I think, five or six albums in after he left A&M, even when he went to Arista, he still brought over Bernie Grunman to do the mastering. And he's used him ever since. So uh, I think that might be one of the, one of the things that's not it's not too warranted, but when I see, um, I, I would really like to see some of these really super super companies, you know, do do some audiophile pressing for some of these some of these big ones. But here's what I was talking about: these two albums here, these two albums here um, are um, one is Weather Report Black Market, and it sounds incredible. It totally does. And then you have Weather Report, Heavy Weather. These are not the MOVs. These are, this is the original, half, this is a half speed master. And this is when Columbia decided, hey, these, you know, when this is when Mobile Fidelity was really getting going. And uh, they decided, hey, let's get in on some of this, uh, some of this stuff too, uh, some of this audiophile stuff too. So I, I get why they did it, but, uh, and it sounds amazing. I gotta tell you, uh, it really does. And uh, for for the undertaking to go go and try to try to one up uh, this album too. This is Black Market, and this is the first album that actually Jaco, Jaco was on. Um, he, um, Zalanul had called him up because Alfonso Johnson left abruptly uh, during the recording of this album. But. Here's the thing. I didn't believe for a second that they're going to be able to one up this. I just was kind of doing it a vanity thing because I, I saw that uh, Music on Vinyl was going to come out with it. Um, I didn't believe they'd be able to, to one up this because these recordings are so spectacular and uh, they're so amazing in, in every way. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard to believe that they could actually do something. Now, I know everybody likes to shit on, on music on vinyl saying all they do is do, do digital stuff and like that. That's not true. Uh, a lot of times if they can get a hold of the tapes, they'll, they'll use tapes. If they can get a hold of the metal, the, the metal parts, they will do that too. So I can't find on these recordings, these specific ones, I can't find anywhere where they say what, they, what their source was. But I can tell you this, their source was amazing because what they did uh, on these albums is, is pretty spectacular. This is the Music on Vinyl uh, Black Market right here, okay? And it's great. I mean, it's, it's a great, it, it sounds great. It's, it's, it's amazing, uh, you know, and then, um, and it looks just like the, ori the original, just like it. I mean, it's, 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 it, you can't tell the difference between the two of them. I mean, it's just really outside of that little bit of orange pop here, and that's on the original. 
Um, it's a little more bright. And the same thing with the, with the um, heavy weather. Heavy weather is a little more pronounced <clears throat> difference in, in packaging because this is, the, this is the music on vinyl, okay? This is the music on vinyl. This is the original. Um, and um, you can see there's, there's differences in, in you know, the, the strength of the color and all this kind of, this is quite a bit more matte color. Um, and it's a matte finish. But I wanna go through, I'm gonna first of all tell you what I do as far as when I'm evaluating these things, because you, you guys have seen my system already. Um, what I do is I turn off my, my equalizer and I turn off my DBX, 3BX, so I can you know, purely evaluate the music without having any you know, accoutrements to push, push it or build up on it. Um, and I gotta tell you, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I made some notes on some stuff that I noticed um, from, from the music on vinyl to the, uh, from, the, from the original to the music on vinyl. And what I'm gonna talk about mainly is, is, uh, is uh, uh, heavy weather. Um, on Birdland, uh, on the original, the bass, there's, there's almost a clipping sound with the bass, uh, like it's a little too loud. Some of that is reverb, and I, I understand that because, um, because Jaka really liked to use overdrive a lot in his amps, stuff like that, but uh, the bass in the music on vinyl is far more, there's much more clarity to it. Um, you can you can hear the fingers touching the touching the, the strings, um, and shorter sounds really amazing too. More much more separation, um, and the sound stage is pretty incredible too. Um, another masterpiece um, is called a remark you made, and shorter is the king on that. Uh, it's just unbelievable. A lot of people don't realize that short Wayne Shorter is the one who's he's the bass. Or the, he's the saxophonist in in the song Asia on uh, on uh, Steely Dan's Asia, and uh, and he he gave them one take. He said, "I will come in when I want when I'm when I, when I think I, I want to come in, and I'm going to go out when I go out." And it's pretty amazing that that was one take. But um, anyway, so um, the let's see. Yeah, the dynamic range on the music on vinyl is superior, and it's shocking that it is because the dynamic range and the and the the, the voicing of the instruments and the, the depth of the instruments is very much present and beautiful in the original recording. Um, and this, the one that I have, I don't. I actually gave away one of my one of my originals. Um, so I don't have the original, I have the, the juiced up version. I don't know if it's juiced up, but it, it's the half speed mastered version of that. And that's what I was showing you before right here. And it's the, if, if you can read that, it's, see how it says half speed master. And this is when, when, um, when uh, Columbia tried to get in on some of the, some of the, the popularity of that, of the audio file recordings at that point. All right, Teen Town is is a song that was written by by Jaco. And see, Jaco and Zalinol both co-produced uh, Heavy Weather, so that's why they're basically it was all either either composed by by Jaco or by um, by Zalinol. But um, it's it's just outrageous. Teen Town is just such an amazing experience with this music on vinyl. Um, I was so surprised because I couldn't believe that they could really make something very different or much better. And it is, it's so much more dynamic. It's just amazing. I, I cannot even believe it. My daughter got me Mr. Gone, she told me. And um, I can't wait to get that. But this is all from Music on Vinyl. They're doing the catalog, at least the catalog that I care about, which is the one that has Shaka Pastorius on it. And, um, but like I said, I mean, I'd love to see some of these, uh, some of these, some of these, uh, these companies come out with with some of these, uh, some catalogs of some of these people. Like Caldera would be amazing. And I've tried to, you know, I've tried to tell you guys about Caldera, and, I, and I've done some neutral draw, uh, some uh, some uh, 
<coughs> some needle drops just to show you how amazing that stuff is. But uh, Rumba Mamba is uh, on the second side. It's, it's a fun and impressionistic percussion piece. Um, that's you're not going to hear a whole lot of difference and weirdness there, but our difference from the <coughs> from the original to the, to the music on vinyl. But Palladium, that's incredible. Um, actually, Jaco Pastorius, he plays the bass and he plays steel drums in that. Um, and it's super dynamic, it's huge sound stage, goes way beyond my speakers uh, on, on the left and right. Um, it's just really amazing. Uh, the Juggler, uh, one of those that, uh, that where, where Jaco was really pissed off. This is where he started really getting angry with, and that's just the second that second album that, that he and he and Zalino worked on together with with uh, Weatherport and Jaco would always be mad because um, Zalino would always play over the top of it he play well he's playing bass with his left hand and he's playing the bass part playing over the top of Jaco and that's why he started trying to you know get angry because he's like stay in your own lane dude so uh Anyway, Havona, that was written by uh, Jaco, and his sound's amazing in that, and, um, and uh, Shorter really, uh, really, really sounds amazing in that, too. He's, uh, he soars in that. So, uh, but anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, you know, I'm going to give you my little rant there at the beginning, but I am. I'm kind of, you know, these people think... These people who are who are coming out with these like Chad and stuff think that everybody all everybody cares and all that's all encompassing all of this old uh, you know I don't know I don't know how to say it this this old time jazz uh, quintets and quartets and and trios when in fact there's amazing musicianship on these progressive jazz and smooth jazz too um, and we we really like to see more of that um, I really am I'm really proud of music on vinyl for going in there and, and taking and doing doing wonders on this catalog which I didn't think would really be possible but they did a great job and and uh, nobody can take that away from them so uh, anyway I just wanted to touch base with you guys uh, we'll talk to you guys soon um, all my best